In this video, I'm going to present to you some of the activities that you should not miss on your first visit to Istanbul. These are activities that are uh, in addition to the activities included in the Istanbul Tourist Pass. So things to try for the first time in Istanbul. Here we go. First of all, I want to give another shout out to this hotel that I stayed at. This was not a paid visit or sponsored in any way. I paid for it myself, but I really enjoyed the location, the staff here, the quality of the rooms were immaculate. Everything was great. So I do recommend if you stay in Istanbul to stay here. If it's our first visit, it's going to be great because it's close to the main attractions. This is in Sultan Ahmed neighborhood. The views are great. Um, the breakfast was very good and it was extremely affordable as well so I do recommend it. The first thing to do in Istanbul you should get a tourist pass if you don't have one. I talked about it in my first video about Istanbul. Um, I shared some of my best tips in my blog. Um, there are a lot of things that the Istanbul pass has to offer. However in this video I'm going to show you there are other things that you should try and do not miss on your first trip to Istanbul. Um, and also some of the things that I mentioned in the first video with the tourist pass, they are free, such as uh, visiting the mosque. This is Hagia Sophia mosque and before you saw the blue mosque. Uh, these are free to visit. But um, if you want to know more, when you visit uh, the popular sites like Katovkapi, um, you can uh, use the uh, tourist pass because it also includes a guide with your visit. So if you go without, you just pay the ticket. But with the tourist pass, you get a, a guide to show you around and tell you about the history of the place. And tell me, uh, let me tell you, this uh, was worth all the money. <laughs> As you can see, this was the um, dinner cruise. It was a lot of fun also included a tourist pass also the grand uh, bazaar was included with the tourist pass it's free to visit but you have a tour with the pass so the thing is that um, the pass offers you not just the entrance but the guide as well uh, and you also get access to our dance show so you basically get access with the pass to a lot of cultural places you also get day trips like this one to Pierlotti. You, of course you can visit all these places by yourself but I find it uh, very well um, and easier to organize if you get the pass because everything is uh, already organized for you. However, what else is there to do in Istanbul? Well, you can do the same things that are included in the pass and also of course you can and should do things that are not uh, such as um, getting on a cruise so um, there are a lot of cruise and boats uh, taking you around the Bosphorus and of course um, you can get on any of these you should not miss it I've been to Istanbul I think more than five times I've always uh, went on a cruise because it's just beautiful it's the best way to see the city you get to see Europe on one side and Asia on the other you get to see the most popular places to visit in Istanbul from the boat usually these uh, tours take about one hour and show you around most of them have also an audio guide that's running in the background but it's gonna be really noisy so it's really hard to listen to that um, unless you are on next to the speaker so <clears throat> one of the things that I do recommend and you should uh, do in Istanbul is uh, try the local transport um, the public transport is really easy to use. You just need to get a card from the machine and the, most stations have them. You need to buy the actual card, it's the red card that I showed you. And then you have to put money on it, top it up with some money. And then you uh, pay as you go with the card. Uh, the trams uh, use this uh, system and uh, also, <laughs> yeah, there's a cat. And also if you want to cross uh, to the Asian side you will also use a ferry which uses the same uh, public transport card so that's really convenient actually that's the cheapest uh, cruise that you can take on the Bosphorus is to take a ferry to the Asian side which is included with the public transport it's really nice and I did that just to 
cross on the other side to uh, go shopping because uh, I find that <laughs> there are m many shops on the other side and also you will see a difference in culture and um, a lot of uh, um, really nice uh, places that you should also visit are on the Asian side. Istanbul is absolutely huge so if you want to visit uh, the main sites you will probably need around four days but uh, if you want to see also the Asian side of Istanbul then mm, um, I think you need at least one week one week and a half and that's really hardcore mode um, I spent uh, here with my mom for this video um, for full days in Istanbul and we were not taking any rest during the day uh, no lunch uh, breaks or anything like that we were just running around and visiting as much as possible so here are some views from the ferry that I told you that takes you from the uh, Europe side Asian side uh, is the public transport it's really really nice so you can just use your card and if you don't want to walk around then um, on the Asian side although you should uh, it's a very nice neighborhood um, where the ferry uh, drops you here there are a bunch of ferries but this one in particular um, we went shopping um, if you don't want to walk around you can just return with the ferry if you want to exchange money you can use one of these ATMs but make sure to check the exchange commission because some of them have no commission and some do uh, when you withdraw money I mean and then of course another thing to do in Istanbul is to eat the Turkish food uh, there is so much Turkish food that's going to delight you especially the Turkish delight you find it everywhere you can even taste it uh, the staff at all these shops are really nice all of them and you can uh, get to try uh, oh my god the baklava looks amazing trust me it is amazing you'll find it everywhere however it's very sweet so don't think that if you just get a few pieces uh, it's not going to be enough it will probably be enough for most of us. So my mom convinced me to have this uh, boil corn, how do you call it? Uh, it's very good. Um, you can find it everywhere here. In front of the park there were like two people, uh, two vendors selling it. It's like 10 Turkish lira. It's really cheap and affordable and it's really good. Yeah, my, my mom loves it. And yeah, we're gonna have this for like early, no, late lunch. And we're just not gonna have lunch today because uh, later today we're gonna go on a Bosphorus cruise, dinner cruise, uh, which, you know, has dinner and drinks and stuff. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. See you later. After you eat the corn, you have to eat the eggs. It's probably the most wonderful, sweetest, uh, most sweet um, dessert ever invented which is the baklava and you have so many different types that you can choose from you basically just walk in any of these shops you know touristic areas you're gonna see a lot of baklava shops and um, basically you just choose like how many you want how many pieces from each different type and then we're gonna put it in a box and then you gotta wait it because they um, you know you pay per kilogram so as I said, you're gonna find these uh, shops for baklava basically everywhere on the street. There are some chains, famous chains of shops uh, like that one. Also, the tur Turkish food is not just baklava, it's a, a lot of things. You find a lot of kebabs everywhere on the street, which is basically their street food. You'll find a lot of cute restaurants, which are very affordable. You find really cheap um, eateries that locals prefer. This was the breakfast from our hotel which was plentiful um, you will find a lot of food everywhere a lot of pies actually I this is chorba the uh, lentil soup which I absolutely adore is one of my favorite foods in the world you find it in Turkey everywhere so this is the Saint Antoine Church Saint Antoine of Padua Church this is the largest Roman Catholic Church in Istanbul Turkey so it is located on Istikal Street in the Beyoglu district it was completed in 1912 it was built on the grounds of the previous church on the same location and it was designed by Giulio Mongeri, an Italian architect who was born in Istanbul. As I said, this was built by the Italian community, which was quite influential in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The community had its roots in the Genovese, Venetian and other Italian merchants and diplomats who had 
been living in Istanbul since the Byzantine times, so the church is built in a neo-Gothic style with a basilica layout and a stunning facade. The facade is built from red brick and it's a rare example of neo-Gothic architecture. In Istanbul, the church is dedicated to Saint Anton of Padua, a Portuguese Catholic priest. Pope John the 23rd before becoming a pope served here as the Vatican's ambassador to Turkey and he often prayed here to this church. He is loved in Turkey and his statue stands in the courtyard of Saint Anton blessing the visitors and the faithful. Istikol Street is one of the most famous avenues in Istanbul, so it's the, located in the historical Beyoglu district. It's an elegant pedestrian street, which is uh, approximately three kilometers long and houses exquisite uh, boutiques, music stores, bookstores, art galleries, cinemas, theaters, libraries, all kinds of nightclubs and historical patisseries, chocolate trees and restaurants. So it's a vibe. Uh, that encompass both cosmopolitan and nostalgic uh, themes. It's bustling with people day uh, and night and both locals and tourists like here to shop and drink and soak in the ambience you'll find here. Also street musicians, artists, performers of all kinds. So here you will also find a famous red tram, which is more than just a mean of transportation, it's basically the symbol of the famous avenue in Istanbul, and it runs between the Galata Tower on one side and the Taksim Square on the other. Basically, you cannot miss the street if you're in Istanbul. Here is where all the craziness happens, it's very beautiful. The Galata Tower, which is also known as Galata Kulesi in Turkish, is a remarkable. Is a remark. The Galata Tower, which is also known as the Galata Kulesi in Turkish, is a remarkable landmark in Istanbul, Turkey. It stands majestically in the Galata district, which is north of the Golden Horns junction with the Bosphorus. The cylindrical tower is made out of stone and uh, you will uh, for sure notice it on the Istanbul skyline wherever you are in the city. It stands at a height of 67 meters which is around 220 feet and it's one of the highest structures when it was built in the 14th century. Uh, the tower is uh, 8.95 meters in diameter, almost 9 meters, and the walls are 3.75 meters thick. There are nine floors in total. It was built in the medieval Genovese style, reflecting the period of its construction when Galata was a Genovese colony. And um, you can uh, visit the tower. You can see people are uh, here at the top. Um, it's a bit of an effort, but the observation deck provides one of the best panoramic views in Istanbul. The 360 degrees um, encompasses the views over the Bosphorus, the Golden Horn, and many of Istanbul's historic sites, such as Topkapi Palace, Hagia Sophia, and the Blue Mosque. Also, there is a restaurant and cafe at the top of the tower, which offers you the opportunity to dine there. Uh, also, at night, the tower is often illuminated, creating a picturesque spectacle against the night sky. Uh, if you want to visit, the tower is included with the Istanbul Tourist Pass, but you can also visit it on your own. I have to say that I have never had time to visit it because there's always a huge queue, especially at sunset. It's one of the best places to be in Istanbul, so if you want to see it at sunset, make sure to plan ahead and be there on time. But nevertheless, even if you don't have time to visit it, uh, go around it. It's a beautiful sight. You will see it from everywhere and anywhere in the city. It's beautiful. So Istanbul streets are as diverse as the city itself. You'll find here narrow winding alleyways with historic uh, uh, backgrounds and you also find modern avenues in the newer parts of the city. So whenever you are in Istanbul, you find yourself uh, in a rich tapestry urban landscape. Sun streets are very famous, as I mentioned, the famous Istikal Street, 
which are primarily pedestrian and are always very busy, while other streets are carrying more of a, a historical significance. For instance, uh, streets in districts like uh, Fatih, um, Sultan Ahmed, Eminomo are dotted with ancient Byzantine and Ottoman architectural treasures like uh, Hagia Sophia, Blue Mosque, Grand Bazaar. In contrast, uh, the streets uh, and uh, neighborhoods near Galata um, are more European uh, and um, certain streets um, offer a sensory experience of vibrant colors, especially those near the spice market, for instance, or other markets. So wherever you are, you will definitely experience something different. There are also some more trendy districts, uh, for instance, the Kadikoi uh, in the Asian side, which offer a range of cafes and restaurants and bars and uh, um, a lot of uh, different vibes all together you can also get to the most residential streets in istanbul um, in areas like balat which you contrast with more modern um, buildings so wherever you go in istanbul there's something different uh, that will probably enchant your sensory experience so i did a lot of walking during this uh, trip with my mom um i really wanted her to feel the vibe of the city because here for instance is the kolata bridge and this is a very uh, active uh, area in the city um also this is one of the reasons i chose this hotel in sultan ahmed neighborhood the historical neighborhood which is so close to most of the historical place i wanted to, to visit with my mom and um, another place that I would uh, recommend staying besides the Sultan Ahmed uh, place if you're not into mosque maybe you can uh, stay near the Taksim uh, square or near Galata this is also a very popular place to um, stay at a hotel if you're in Istanbul for the first time Another thing that I want to mention is that if this is your first time to Istanbul or to Turkey or to a Muslim country, do know that uh, Muslims uh, pray five times a day and uh, this might be a bit awkward to hear at first but the, the calls to prayers um, happen uh, every day five times a day and you will be shocked when you first listen to it. It sounds something like this. Another thing to visit uh, in Istanbul is the Sultan Ahmed neighborhood. I'm pretty sure on your first visit you're not gonna miss this neighborhood, but um, I'm just gonna put it on the list. Uh, either way, this is where you'll find some beautiful houses, uh, you'll find uh, some beautiful hotels. This is where I booked my hotel. I do recommend staying here. It's very peaceful, nice, a lot of uh, restaurants and cafes, a lot of rooftops too. Um, this is where, um, so this was the view of my hotel. Look, I could see the sunset. I could see the blue moss from here. It was very, very nice and affordable. Um, so basically this neighborhood, uh, you see it either way because uh, if you're coming to see the blue mosque, the Sultan Ahmed mosque, uh, or the Hagia Sophia mosque, the Topkapi palace, uh, you know, these are top attractions in Istanbul for your first visit. So um, just uh, make sure to plan a bit of uh, extra time to walk on the streets where the houses are. They're, these are mostly pedestrian streets, um, but they are very, very nice. And um, at night, uh, you will find here also a lot of uh, colorful restaurants, uh, so do not miss the neighborhood. Another thing to do in Istanbul, of course, is shopping. Even my mom was crazy saying like we have to go to istanbul we have to do shopping ever since i was a child coming from romania we all knew that istanbul is the place to go and buy gold for instance there's a lot of gold there look at this uh, um brochure it's actually a book uh, it has 
everything and uh, anything. Uh, actually, in the Grand Bazaar, you will find the entire section uh, just for gold. Um, also, a leather, if you want to buy leather, Istanbul is the place to buy leather. Uh, when we um, took the uh, Pierlotti uh, half-day trip at the end, they took us to this shop and uh, um, we were presented with the latest fashion. They said that they sell these leather jackets to like important fashion uh, houses and uh, they gave us a discount. Of course, my mom was uh, uh, convinced by the shop uh, keeper that this is the best leather she could uh, get so I had to buy it for her so now she owns that uh, red leather jacket um, other things you can buy in Istanbul are scarves I love scarves and if you want a pashmina scarf this is the place to buy it you can find from the very cheap scarves on the street to very expensive uh, cashmere or silk scarves uh, everywhere of course, if you're going to Istanbul, you're probably gonna experience and see and admire the new Istanbul airport. Um, they retired the old airport uh, because it was simply too small to become uh, this huge hub for Turkish Airlines, which is uh, the company that connects the most destinations in the world. And I was really surprised to see this new uh, airport is really huge uh, full of um, restaurants and shops and uh, a lot of terminals it, it connects basically the entire world and i was really impressed with the um, airport so uh, do spend some time plan some time ahead to uh, get around in the airport so these are my recommendations for your first time in Istanbul. Make sure to plan a bit ahead because some of these attractions can get really crowded, especially during high season, which is summer. It's gonna be really hot, but uh, it's gonna be worth it. Uh, consider getting the Istanbul tourist pass. Do check out my blog for that. Uh, I have an entire review if you wanna use the pass and enjoy your time in Istanbul. It's gonna be amazing. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again in my next video. Safe travels!